Yesterday, we reported on the murder of 21-year-old Angel Rodriguez. Police say Rodriguez was riding his motorcycle when someone rode up on a dirt bike and shot him in the head Saturday night at Aramingo and Butler. There were hundreds, literally hundreds of ATVs out at the time of this murder. There were 50 or more people who, after the murder, took photographs of the decedent. Um, we have a lot of video, but not one person who was out there has come forward to help police. Well, the shooting happened one day after city council, well, at least a couple days after city council passed a bill to close a loophole that enforces the illegal use of ATVs, dirt bikes, dune buggies on city streets. One of the sponsors of that bill is Councilman Derek Green. Councilman Green joins us now. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Mike and Alex. Pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, just go back to what she just said. There looked like 40 or 50 people took the time to walk over and take a picture with her cell phone of this man's dead body on the street, but still they're not going to help police find the shooter. I guess I, I don't, I, I'm not asking you to comment on that. It's just absurd. What was the loophole that the council filled? Well, part of the problem that we have with ATVs is that motorbikes and dune buggies were not part of our current legislation. So that was a loophole that was filled. Um, it's very distressing to hear what happened over the weekend, especially when another life was lost in our city. Uh, and so our legislation that was passed um, last Thursday helps to address this issue. And we're really trying to focus on this concern of ATVs, uh, motorbikes and dune buggies in our city. But it's not just a Philadelphia issue. Uh, I'm the current president of the Pennsylvania Municipal League and talking with my colleagues around the Commonwealth, they've also been dealing with this issue. But in addition to not only Philadelphia having this problem, it's also a problem around the country. And through my role as a board member for the National League of Cities, I've been also talking with cities around the country about how to address this issue. So when you say um, about closing the loophole, what exactly will that change then when it comes to enforcing it? Well, prior to the legislation, uh, motorbikes and dune buggies um, could not be confiscated. They actually had to be returned back to individuals. Now, like ATVs, um, those items can be um, destroyed if possible. And that's oh. effective immediately? Yes, the legislation went into effect immediately. Okay, as soon as it deal. gets signed by the mayor. You got a thousand. By the way, this has been a problem for years in other parts of the city besides Center City. But now that it's hit Center City and, you know, the rich people are, are upset with the noise, maybe something's going to get done, which is absurd, too. Uh, but it's been going on for years like up in North Philly. So how do, you, how do you stop it, really? you got got 1,000 people on motorcycles. How do you physically stop it that night? You only have so many bike uh, motorcycle cops to chase them. You know what I mean? I, I understand what you're saying. And this is not just a center city issue. This is a citywide issue uh, that's been growing over the years. I think the pandemic had really um, caused this increase. Uh, I know the police departments increased their detail um, to address this issue. Um, we've been getting reports on a weekly basis on a number of vehicles that have been confiscated um, based on this problem. Um, but we're also looking at other ideas. Um, we've had a chance to talk with people in Baltimore um, that have an organization called B360 Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, over 200 um, vehicles like this were confiscated. In 2020, only three were confiscated. So they've been, been able to work with over 7,000 young people, bring them into a program that allows them to ride in a safe way, but also encourage them on how to use STEM education. Uh, so we're looking at Baltimore. We're looking at other jurisdictions around the country to try to address this issue, but it's not just a center city issue. This is a citywide issue. I've received calls from you know, constituents in North Philadelphia, Southwest Philadelphia, uh, Northwest, Northeast. Uh, there's been a, lot, a number of communities impacted by this issue. And, and you mentioned uh, the fact that the city is looking at other ideas about um, how to mitigate this. Do you think, um, that that actually could work here when you say like a, um, a lot of people are talking about a safe space or isn't part of the thrill for them riding through the streets and going wherever yeah, they want to go what kind of space like what would that look like to make them want to only go there and not be throughout the city well I'm talking with the, the founder of the organization B360 in Baltimore 
Um, they've been able to work with the riders um, and also provide a way of trying to address the culture and, and really um, talk to those young people in the culture about how they can do this in a safe way and also give them an opportunity to learn about STEM education. Uh, 36 riders have now been employed in this program. They've saved uh, the city of Baltimore $1.2 million. So we're looking at this idea. We're also looking at other ideas that we can try to address this issue to really bring people into the process mm -hmm. uh, and make sure we have a safer city so we don't have the tragic situation that occurred over the weekend. Right. And to clarify really quickly, mm -hmm. when you say to do it in a safe way, what is a safe way um, to well, do this? Well, a safe way is just do what's happening in Baltimore. When you go from a situation where they've had over 200 um, vehicles confiscated in 2017 to only three in 2020, clearly they're doing something to you know, embed with the young people in the culture to provide them the opportunity to participate in this in, a, in an area that's um, designated for what they're trying to do, but that's not impacting okay, so the safe space. and motorists. That's the part I was wondering. Correct. I understood that the numbers went down. I was wondering specifically, what was it? What items, what changes did they make to make it safe to do that? So, so I guess that means it's the safe space. Correct. Again, it's a cool thing. I mean, you want to be a rebel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like the skateboarders. We, we're going to build you a skateboard park. Yeah, it was more fun to ride on the rails over in City Hall. I'm, I'm cool, you know? I, 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 you know, uh, our district attorney, Larry Krasner, weighed in on this. He says, we've really got to come up with some creative ideas here. And I, we are committed to advocating for opportunity, opportunities for young people. And this means uh, including providing safe spaces for them to engage in healthy recreation while also holding those who do violent things or endanger others uh, on dirt bikes and ATVs accountable. Well, that wasn't much of it. Anyway. Uh, it just um, adds on to what we were already yeah, discussing. you got to be so. accountable, whatever that means. Uh, well, at least work is being done and efforts are being made. You guys are talking to other cities to see what we can do. And, um, you know, they're all steps. Absolutely, and we you know, kind of really need to work with young people. And also I learned that there's a, a, a professional flat track racing association, which I didn't know. And some of the young people in other parts of the country have been able to become professional um, racers and, and riders. So we're looking at all of these issues, but we also need to make sure that we're keeping people safe in our city so we don't have what happened over the weekend happen again. Yeah, it's a mountain of an issue. Uh, good luck, Councilman. Thank you for your Thank work. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for talking to us. Uh,